the battle of the right hand. Luke chapter 6, we're going to read from verse 6 to 10. Luke chapter 6, from verse 6 to 10. It says, And it came to pass also in another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man with which had the withered hand, rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil? To save life or to destroy it? And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. King of glory, the final authority. As we look into your word this morning, I ask that your spirit will move to and fro back and forth in our midst and heal and deliver and set free. Let not your word fall on the ground. Let no one under my voice go back the same. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The battle of the right hand. I want to quickly share with us the spiritual significance of the right hand. Number one, when your right hand is withered, it is your instrument of authority that is withered. Right hand is an instrument of authority. Instrument of power. It's an instrument of rulership. Revelation 5.1 says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. That is the scroll of office. Was placed at the right hand of him that sits upon the throne. The right hand in the realm of the spirit is an instrument of authority. Revelation 5, 7 says, And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Not out of the left hand of him that sat upon the throne. But out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. The right hand is an instrument of authority. Number two is an instrument of blessing. If your right hand is withered, you cannot bless anyone. Genesis 48, verse 14, you remember the story very well. When Joseph brought his children, the Bible says, And Israel stretched out his right hand and lay it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hand withingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. But Israel said, Nay, it is not like that. The right hand in the realm of the spirit is an instrument of blessing. Even a left-handed man, when he wants to pray for somebody, he still lays his right hand. Because the right hand in the realm of the spirit is an instrument of blessing. When your spiritual right hand is withered or afflicted, you cannot bless anybody and they will be blessed. Number three, a right hand is an instrument of warfare. Exodus chapter 15 verse 6. He said, Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, had dashed in pieces the enemy. Exodus 15 verse 12, the same scripture. He said, Thou stretched out thy right hand, and the earth swallowed them. It's an instrument of warfare in the realm of the spirit. I'm sure you know that the right hand of God, God was not using his right hand to break the enemies by himself. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphoric assertion. The right hand in the realm of the spirit is an instrument of warfare. When your right hand is withered or attacked, 
guard in the realm of the spirit, you are not able to fight, fight any battle and win in the realm of the spirit. Number four. The right hand is an instrument of deliverance. Psalm 20 verse 6, Psalm 20 verse 6. He said, now know I that the Lord saved his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. With the saving strength of his right hand. This morning, God will stretch forth his right hand on your behalf. Psalm 118 verse 16. He said, the right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The right hand is an instrument of deliverance. The Bible says they get not the land by their strength or by their power, but by the arm of the Lord, by the right hand of the Lord, because the Lord had favor unto them. This morning, the right hand of God will rise on your behalf. Amen. I was thinking your amen will be louder than that. Amen. Two important spiritual truths I want you to know this morning. The right hand is the target of attack of the enemy. The right hand is the target of attack of the enemy. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1. Zechariah 3 1. He said, and he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Standing at his right hand to resist him. Because of the spiritual significance of the right hand, Satan was standing at the right hand of Joshua. There's what we call sentry in the military. Sentry. These are the people that stand guard. They stand where even if rain is falling, that's the way they will stand. Nothing will move them unless a command. You go there and give them a blow, they will not move. Because they are not supposed to move. This morning, every satanic sentry on your right hand, heaven will pull them away for you. I say heaven will pull them away for you. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 91 verse 7, it says, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand. When the hand of God came to make people fall, he said a thousand was on the left, a thousand that were on the left fell. But at the right, there were 10,000. What, what were 10,000 doing at the right hand? <laughs> Why didn't they distribute themselves evenly? 5,000, 5,000. Because of the significance of the right hand in the realm of the spirit. Do you know that when they want to curse somebody in the, in the Bible days, they will say, let Satan stand at his right hand. Psalm 109, verse 6. Psalm 109, verse 6. He says, set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. It was a curse in Bible days. This morning again, I say prophetically, every satanic sentry at your right hand, the God of heaven and earth will dislodge them in the name of Jesus. Revelation chapter 13 verse 6. When the devil and the antichrist will come and take his reign here on earth. One of the things he will do is that he will put a mark on the right hand of the people. The Bible says, and he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Every mark on your right hand to weaken your right hand. Every mark on your right hand that identify your right hand in the realm of the spirit as a right hand that ought to be arrested. This morning, the blood of Jesus will clean it. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The second fact I want you to know, second truth I want you to know is that when God wants to help you, he will touch your right hand or uphold your right hand. Isaiah 45 verse 1. Isaiah 45 1. He said, Thus said the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding. 
this morning, the Lord will hold your right hand. Amen. Whose right hand I have holding to subdue nations before him. And I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two living gates. And the gates shall not be shut. Look at what God wanted to do in the life of Cyrus. Look at what God wants to use Cyrus to do. And in order for that to happen, he said, what I do, I will uphold his right hand. I know once I hold up his right hand, and there's no resistance against his right hand, and there's no enemy standing at his right hand, and his right hand is not weakened or withered, then all of these things I want to do in his life will be possible. This morning, the Lord will uphold your right hand. Amen. We are going to pray this morning. It's going to be a deliverance service. Amen. There are certain lessons I want to pick out for you in this scripture before we begin to pray. And when it is time to pray, please, I want you to pray with the whole of your heart. Amen. Amen. Church is not for entertainment. It's a place of encounter with God. This morning, the Spirit of God will wrought mighty deliverance in our midst. Amen. The first lesson I want you to learn in the case of this man, in Luke chapter 6, is that divine encounter is turn by turn. Is what? It's turn by turn. You see, when it has not come to your turn, it will appear as if you are not righteous. It will appear as if you don't know how to pray. But when it comes to your turn, every step you take will be correct. Even when you make mistake, God will say, the blood of my son covers it. The man that was sitting by the pool of Bethsaida, when it was his turn, every mistake he made, Jesus overlooked it. Divine encounter is turn by turn. And it is somebody's turn this morning. Amen. Because that scripture says, look at the first statement in that scripture. It says, and it came to pass also. And it came to pass also. Which means, some other guy's situations, some other lady's situation has come to pass. But this guy's own has not come to pass. And maybe he has witnessed the situation of other people coming to pass. So that was not the first situation that will come to pass in that time or in that synagogue. He said, and it came to pass also. Yours will also come to pass. I say yours will also come to pass. You have had people give testimony in the area of your challenges. You've seen people come to give testimony how their own came to pass. Yours also will come to pass. Amen. Concerning your own challenges, it shall also come to pass. He said it came to pass also. Like others. So it is turn by turn. The Bible says in Esther chapter 2 verse 15. He said now when the turn of Esther. There was the turn of. What's the name of the queen before him? Vashti. There was the turn of Vashti. Vashti. Or Vashti the, the queen before Esther. But when the turn of Esther came. When the turn of Esther came. Brethren, this thing is turn by turn. Amen. This thing is turn by turn. It's turn by turn. It is because it is not your turn. That is why it appears as if you don't know anything. But now it is your turn. Look, for, look, look at somebody with your spiritual eyes and say, brother, sister, it is your turn. I 
I bring you a good news this morning. I bring you a good news this morning. I bring you good news this morning. It is your turn. Now it is your turn. In the name of Jesus, your turn has finally come. Come on, say, My turn has finally come. Give somebody over to say, It is my turn, it is my turn, it is my turn, it is my turn. It is your turn, brother. It is your turn, sister. And there is nothing anybody can do about it. It is your turn. It is your turn. Lesson number two. Lesson number two. Is that there is, there is a set day for every affliction to end. It says, on another Sabbath. On another Sabbath. You know, that was about the third or fourth Sabbath of controversy in the ministry of Jesus Christ. But all those Sabbaths were not the Sabbath for this man. There is a set day for every affliction to end. You see, today, November 7th, is the day somebody's affliction will come to an end. You, he said, on the Sabbath, they were in the synagogue like this. You see, we gather every Sunday. But there is a particular Sunday allocated from heaven for somebody's affliction to terminate. Today is your own Sunday. I said today is your own Sunday. Today is your own Sunday. I told you in 1996, just as usual as every other Sunday, I went to church. Nothing unusual. And that Sunday, I didn't know it was my Sunday. That was the turn around of event in my destiny. Amen. I was just serving in my duty post. And I just heard the word of God say, today. Hallelujah. Say, today. Hallelujah. And the moment that voice came, things began to happen. As the service closed and I, was, and I got home, as I was entering my house, my phone was ringing. And I picked it. It was Ben or Shibodu's family that was calling me from U.S. Please bring our mother for us. Our mother is very sick. Can you help us, please? We need your help. We'll send you a ticket. We'll send you everything. And in church that morning, Sunday, God said, Today, I am turning around your destiny. I am sending you to a foreign land. I will bless you and make you a blessing to your generation on Sunday service. Morning. As I got home that same Sunday, phone rang from Atlanta that I should please bring their mother to America. I said, God, is this connected to what you said in the morning? Like joke, like joke. We went to the embassy for the mother. They did not even ask any questions. Say, are you the one taking him? I said, yes, what do you do? I said, I'm an immigration officer. Okay, come collect your passport in the afternoon. Before the, the ticket has arrived in Nigeria, everything has arrived. And before you know what is happening, I landed in Atlanta. Because once the day begins, everything will begin to cooperate. Everything will begin to harmonize. Things you have done before that has not worked, it is because your day has not come. He said, on that, on another Sabbath, which was that man's Sabbath, this Sunday is your own Sunday. As you say a loud amen, your day begins today. I say, your own day begins today. Your own day begins today. Your own day begins today. Every day may look the same, but every day are not the same. Every day carry different packages. Every day carry different virtues. Today has your name attached to it. Your affliction will come to an end. In the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. The Bible says, surely there shall be an end. For surely there is an end. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. He said, on another Sabbath, on another Sunday. Do you know that theology and said that, Bible historian said that, the man was even set, was even arranged. They went and picked him where he was begging for arms. And brought him, oh yeah, come and sit here on this Sabbath. Because we want to see whether this guy will heal you on Sabbath day so that we, 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 we take him up on it. Because he has, you know, you remember the, the, the woman that was be, be, bent for 18 years that, he, that she, he, he healed on Sabbath day. He has done one or two things on Sabbath day. The controversy has been all over the place. So they went and gathered themselves on Sabbath, the, the Pharisees that day. I said, today, let's, let's come and catch him. We set him up. So the man where he was, he has given up hope, begging for arms, with the right hand with that. They say, you are the guinea pig. You are the scapegoat. We are going to use you now. Come with your reproach and let's use you as our instrument to do what, not knowing that it was his day. Not knowing that it was his day. When your day comes, God can arrange anything anyhow. When it, it is your day, even those who are reproaching you, God can use them as instruments. Those who are your enemies, God will use them as instruments. I told you, one army officer, Cornell, the president gave an order and said, you know, deploy this person to be my personal assistant. The person they gave, the, 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 there's another officer, Colonel. Their last name is the same. The only difference is the first letter. The, the first, one, one last name starts with P. The other one starts with K. And the other guy whose name starts with K is not a friend, you know, it's not a friend of the president because of where he comes from. They don't want him around them. And then the man who was to execute the order did not read the name well. So he sent a message to the station of the man where, whose name stands with K. Because it's a long name and all the letters are the same. The difference is just the beginning letter. One starts with P, one starts with K. And he sent the signal to the man with K and said, report at uh, Asorok to be, this is congratulations. The man packed his load <laughs> and reported, documented, and started work. And the president you know, got to the office, you know, the, the, the next week, and, and the man came in and said, you know, morning, sir, I, I'm reporting on duty. He said, he said what? He said, he could not do anything again. Why? Because it was his day. So even when the man doesn't want him, he made mistake. When it is your day, everything, everything, good, evil or neutral will begin to work for you. Amen. When it is your day. When it is your day. Nobody has an option when your day comes. They, when they brought him as an instrument of reproach. But because it was his day, the hand of the Lord came upon him. This morning, I say prophetically to you that today, is your own day. Everything will begin to work together for your favor. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sit down for one second. We will soon begin to pray. Number three. There is a place to be by time. These are lessons I want you to learn from this story. There is a place to be by time. Coming to church Sunday morning should not be one other activity. It should be the activity. Because there's always an encounter at the altar. There is a place for you to be. Sunday morning, brethren, is not the day to go and attend, you know, uh, parapol meeting. <laughs> the meeting association of Ugeli. <laughs> <laughs> 
that Sunday morning is not the time for a Kitipara meeting. Amen? Or Trinidad and Tobago ones. If there's anything like that. To everybody from Trinidad, we are meeting this morning. Sunday morning? No, that's the wrong time to meet. It is at the altar that you should be Sunday morning. If all the customers in this world are coming to your shop Sunday morning, please close your shop. Close your shop and come to the altar. There is a place to be part time. If this man was not in synagogue that day, there are certain days that God will come for you. On such day, you will not be found missing. I'm telling you. There are times we we'll have, especially when we have special meetings. When I'm praying, depending on the theme of the meeting, when I'm praying, because of the information I'm privy to about church members, there are certain people I will be praying, God, this meeting is for this person. Please, this is, Lord, let this weekend not pass this person by. Lord, touch this situation. Turn it around. It has, been, it has been waiting for long. Lord, please. And guess what? The program will come and go. The person will not be there. When I say, ah, where are you? Say, ah, sorry, Pastor. You know, I wanted to, you know, this and that, this and that. Hey. <laughs> there is a place to be part time. There is a place to be. You will not miss your timing. I say you will not miss your timing. In the name of Jesus. Lesson number four. Do not despise teaching sessions. You know some of us all we like is revival. Prophetic meeting. You know prosperity meeting. These are you know, uh, all, all these big big titles meetings. That's what we But when it comes to teaching the word of God. We don't want to be there. But the Bible says in Luke 5, 17, it says, and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the Lord sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Even in this text scripture that we are looking at, it says, and it came to pass on another Sabbath that he entered into synagogue and taught. When the word of God is being taught, the power of God is being released. Wherever you see the word of God being taught, there's the power of God that is being generated. Don't despise teaching sessions. Don't look down on midweek service. Don't look down on you know, home cell groups where we do Bible studies. Everywhere the word of God is being taught, the power of God is being released. Number five, lesson number five, be obedient to prophetic instructions. The man was told, Stand up. He stood up. Stretch forth your hand. He stretched forth his hand. No question. At times, some prophetic instruction can sound ridiculous. It can sound intimidating. But just obey. Imagine the whole synagogue seated. And the only man with the withered hand was asked to stand up. Oh, for everybody to see that I'm a, I'm a man with a withered hand. How can I stand up among these, uh, you know, among these people? No, don't ignore or disobey prophetic instruction. I told you in a meeting of those who were believing God for the fruit of the womb. And the man of God said, you know, every, everybody believing God for the uh, fruit of the womb, you know, stand up and run around this church seven times. And one woman there, very, very, very wealthy woman, he said, run around, run around seven times. God is not that... Uh, you know, God is not that bitter. <laughs> and every other, every other person ran, ran. And the next year, all of them came with their babies. Amen. The woman went to the man of God and said, please let me run, run 21 times. The man of God said, it does not work like that. That was the instruction I received then. And if I don't receive it, I can't make it work. So don't be too sophisticated for prophetic instructions. Don't be too educated for prophetic instruction. Don't be too theological 
for t- prophetic instruction. No, that, not, that one is not in the Bible. Yeah. Prophetic instruction is different from scripture. Mm. Amen? If you, if you read Bible and you see what some, some, some prophetic actions that some people took, Isaiah, Ezekiel, look at some, thing, some, some things they did. Some things they did, you can't even, in the Bible, I can't even say it with my mouth. <laughs> I can't even say it. I'm telling you, prophetic instructions. Number six. Jesus told the man, stand. Don't sit down like others. Stand for what is right. Stand for what is true. Stand in the gap. Even when you are the only one standing, please stand. That's one lesson I want you to learn. To encounter the victory of the right hand. Stand. Stand for what is right. Stand for what is true. Stand in the gap for others. Don't sit like everybody. Stand to serve. Stand to take your place. And finally, number seven. Stretch forth your hands. Stretch forth your hands. These are the two instructions. Stand and stretch forth your hand. Don't hide your hand like others. Stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand of supplication to heavens. Stretch forth your hand of praise. Stretch forth your hand of help. Stretch forth your hand of giving. Stretch forth your hands. Stretch means stretch. Exact energy to do it. It's not something easy. So stretch forth your hand in your giving. Stretch forth your hand to help others. Stretch forth your hand in the place of prayer. Stretch forth your hand in the place of praise. Stand and stretch your hand. Those were the instructions to this man. There is a battle of the right hand that God wants to fight for you. But stand and stretch. Don't sit. Even if everybody is sitting in that position, if it is not right, don't sit with them. Stand up for what is right. Stand up for what is just. Stand up for what is true. Stretch forth your hand of help to others. Stretch forth your hand of supplication. Stretch forth your hand of giving. When demand is being made for anything, don't hold back your hand. Jesus said this woman that put his might there, just one might, is more blessed than every other person. When you see somebody is in need around you and you can help, don't hold back your hand. Stretch forth your hand. The God of heaven and earth will grant victory on the battle of right hand this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to spend some time to pray. There are three prayer points we're going to pray this morning. In Luke chapter 6, the text scripture, 6 6 to, to 10, the right hand of that man was healed. So the first prayer point we're going to pray is, Lord, heal, let my right hand be functional. Let my right hand be functional. Remember, your right hand is your instrument of authority. It's your instrument of blessing. It's your instrument of warfare. It's your instrument of deliverance. If it's not functioning, all these things we have mentioned cannot function in your life appropriately. As a young man believing God for a wife, if your right hand is withered in the realm of the spirit, you cannot stretch it out to ask for another hand in marriage. As a young lady believing God for a husband, if your right hand is withered in the realm of the spirit, nobody can ask for your hand in marriage. Do you know that a lady started a business and every other person were, were, were prospering in that business? She was not. Customers would troop in to that shopping mall and go into every other store except her own. 
And when she sought prayer, as she was being prayed for, it was revealed in the realm of the spirit that bees covered her right hand. Bees. In the realm of the spirit. You want to buy something from somebody and you see bees all over her hand. And the bees covering her hand in the realm of the spirit was rebooked. And the next day, customers began to flood in. The realm of the spirit controls the physical. A hand that is withered cannot receive paycheck. A hand that is withered cannot write paycheck. A hand that is withered cannot sign contracts. When your hand is withered in the realm of, your right hand is withered in the realm of, there are so many things that cannot be done. So you are going to pray, Lord, let my right hand be functional. Prayer point number two. Lord, let my right hand be strong. Isaiah 45 verse 1, it says, Cyrus, I uphold his right hand. And prayer point number three. Lord, remove every satanic resistance at my right hand. Zechariah 3.1. He said, he said, you know, Satan resisting Joshua at his right hand. These are three prophetic prayer points we want to pray this morning and there will be there will be deliverance over situation and circumstances. I want you to pray with the whole of your heart. Amen? So let, let's rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet. And you're going to say, Jesus, I am here today in, this, in the synagogue. As you heal the right hand of that man in Luke chapter 6, Heal my right hand today. Let my right hand become functional. Everything that has withered my right hand, everything that has paralyzed my right hand, everything that has incapacitated my right hand, Lord, heal my right hand in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I want you to open your mouth and pray. Lord, heal my right hand. Heal my right hand. Heal my right hand. Heal my right hand. Heal my right hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Heal my right hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has withered my right hand. Let my right hand be functional. Let my right hand be functional. Right hand be functional. Let my right hand be functional. Oh God, Rabosa Talaba. It is my instrument of authority. It is my instrument of blessing. It is my instrument of warfare. It is my instrument of deliverance. Let my right hand be functional. Let my right hand be functional. Mase kalabari bobo shitabaha. Imbradosa kolabayanda. Imbrede kelebori mwasi kalabaha. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Say after me, Father. In the name of Jesus. This morning, by your power, let my right hand be functional. My instrument of authority, my instrument of blessing, my instrument of warfare, my instrument of deliverance. Lord, let it be functional as from this day in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray. Lord, let my right hand be functional. Let my right hand be functional in the mighty name of Touch my right hand, my instrument of, of authority, my instrument of blessing, my instrument of warfare, my instrument of deliverance. Lord, let it be functional. Rebosha talaba, lingerebosha talaba, ligerebobosha talaba, rabosha talaba. In the name of Jesus, let my right hand be functional. Let my right hand be functional. In the name of Jesus, let my right hand be functional. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah to the Lamb. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Bible says, it said, I saw Satan standing, he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Standing at his right hand to resist, you are going to pray. Father, say after me, Father. In the name of Jesus, every resistance at my right hand, satanic resistance, demonic resistance at my right hand, Lord, let my right hand be free. Deliver my right hand. Set free 
my right hand from every satanic resistance, from every demonic resistance in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Every resistance in my, to, to my instrument of authority, every resistance to my instrument of blessing, every resistance to my instrument of deliverance, every resistance to my instrument of warfare, Lord, let my right hand be free. Set my right hand free. Deliver my right hand in the name of Jesus. Rabosha talaba, imbrado kaloba yaba, rikete borimama sutalaba, rebobosha talaba. It is the battle of the right hand this morning. It is the battle of the right hand. Lord, let my right hand be free. Let my right hand be free. Let it not be limited. Let it not be hindered. Let it not be tied in the name of Jesus Christ. Rabosho kolobo, imbradalaba, zigele borimama sutaba, imbere boshi kalaba, imbrede kelebo, imbrada kalaba yande, rebobo satalaba. In bread de kelebori baba sudaba, regge de bogro bo shondo bo. In bread de kalabari mo sudaba, riba bo shikaba. Every satanic resistance at my right hand, rabo sho kolobo ho. Lord, set me free, set my hand right hand free. Deliver my right hand, my hand of authority. Rabo sho kelebori baba sudaba. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. That scripture says, "Say I have found." Cyrus, whose right hand I have upholding to subdue nations before him. I will lose the loins of kings. I will open before him the two lived gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, let my right hand be strong. Let my right hand be strong. Uphold my right hand and subdue nations before me. Lose the noise of kings before me. Open the two leaf gates before me. Let the gates not be shut. Strengthen my right hand. Let my right hand be strong. Let it not be weak. Let it not be tired. Let it not be wearied. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, let my right hand be strong. Uphold my right hand to subdue nations. Uphold my right hand to lose the noise of kings. Uphold my right hand to open the two leaf gates. Up to my right hand that the gate will not be shut. In the mighty name of Jesus, let my right hand not be weary. Let my right hand not be weak. Let my right hand not be not come down. In the mighty name of Jesus cast of Nazareth, let my right hand be strong in the name of, uphold my right hand, O God of heaven and earth. In Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Rise up on your feet and I want you to lift your right hand unto the Lord. As a point of contact spiritually, your right hand is your instrument of authority. That is your instrument of blessing. That is your instrument of warfare. That is your instrument of deliverance. When the king lifts up his right hands, whatever he says should go, will go. Do you know that when the king lifts up his right hand to somebody, it could be for acceptance. It could be for death. Your right hand is your, is your symbol of authority. In the name of Jesus. Lord, every battle against right hand under my voice, every resistance against right hand under my voice, every right hand that is withered, every right hand that is held down, every right hand that is tied, every right hand, Lord God Almighty, that is opposed, every right hand that is weak, tired, dried, every right hand, Lord God Almighty, that has been cut off, every right hand, oh God, that has been removed by the authority in the name of Jesus, let the right hand of God touch it in the name of Jesus. In your right hand of righteousness, receive a touch. In your right hand of righteousness, receive a touch. In your right hand of authority, receive a touch. In your right hand of blessing, 
receive a touch. In your right hand of warfare, receive a touch. In your right hand of deliverance, receive a touch. Every satanic resistance at your right hand, I will book them in the name of Jesus. Every right hand that is withered, be restored in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.